After the death of conservative Justice Antonin Scalia in 2016, President Obama nominated Merrick Garland to replace him. A moderate liberal, Garland would have shifted the balance of the high court to the left. With the election approaching, Senate Republicans refused to hold a hearing on Garland's nomination. The American people should have a say in the court's direction. And then Obama's term came to an end, and Donald Trump entered the White House. He nominated the conservative Justice Neil Gorsuch to replace Scalia. Then when the swing vote Justice Kennedy retired, Trump went with the solidly conservative Brett Kavanaugh to take his spot. Liberals, concerned that a conservative majority may dominate the court for a generation and overturn key precedents like Roe v. Wade, have responded by reviving calls to expand the membership of the Supreme Court to include as many as 15 justices. Their goal is to water down conservative influence. The proposal harkens back to the 1930s when FDR aggressively pushed the idea of court packing because his New Deal policies were being declared unconstitutional. They are no longer uh, public servants in the way that we have always imagined them to be. Mm -hmm. All the options are on the table. Ilya Soman, a law professor at George Mason University and a contributor to the Volat Conspiracy blog, sat down with Reason to discuss the revival of court packing proposals on the left and how they could undermine the institution of judicial review. Do you think Democrats have a point, though, over the Merrick Garland nomination and how that was all handled? I think you could reasonably argue about whether the Republicans acted improperly. Even if you do believe that the Republicans acted improperly, which is, a, I think, a reasonable belief, it doesn't follow the court packing as justifiable retaliation. Court packing would be a major escalation beyond what previously happened with Garland or anything that previously happened with Supreme Court nomination battles over the last several decades, because unlike simply blocking the nominee to one particular seat, this would at one fell swoop uh, change the majority on the court and add multiple justices who would serve for decades. Moreover, uh, it would have the potential to create a dangerous cycle of retaliation, whereas simply blocking one nominee, a retaliation in kind would just be blocking the next Republican nominee in a similar circumstances the next time the Republicans nominate someone uh, when the Democrats control the Senate. If the Democrats retaliated in kind in that way, one could argue about whether they were justified in blocking a particular nominee, depending, depending on what you think about that person's jurisprudence. But certainly procedurally, it would not be an escalation and it would not threaten the long-term undermining of judicial review, uh, whereas court packing would have that effect. Uh, it would be retaliating. It would be like retaliating to conventional bombing with nuclear bombing. Uh, I think retaliating with the same kind of bombing as the other side did, that might be entirely reasonable. Deploying the nuclear weapons is a very different kind of thing. And a lot of this harkens back to, of course, FDR and his proposal in 1937 to pack the court. This plan will save our national constitution from hardening of the judicial artery. Why do you think that failed? And do you see an appetite with this Democratic Party to actually get this done? In one sense, his proposal failed, and it failed in large part because many people in his own party were afraid of it. For example, Senator Burton Wheeler, himself a New Deal Democrat, led the opposition in the Senate to this. And they worried, rightly in my view, that court packing would destroy the effectiveness of judicial review uh, and undermine this important check on government power. Uh, an interesting question to ask is, if a Democratic president proposed something similar today, would he or she also get uh, opposition within their own party? Uh, and it's difficult to know for sure. I think a lot of moderate Democrats are wary of this idea, uh, and even some liberal ones like Cory Booker, who pointed out recently this tit-for-tat dynamic. On the other hand, we do have today a more ideologically unified Republican, uh, I'm sorry, Democratic Party, also Republican Party as well, but the Democratic Party is what's relevant here. Uh, and therefore, there are relatively fewer moderates than there were in the 1930s. And also, uh, there may be more anger specifically focused at the Supreme Court today or even more than in the 1930s. Uh, so it's possible that they wouldn't be the same resistance the last point I would make on this is that while FDR failed to pack the court, uh, some scholars believe that he succeeded in the sense that uh, some believe that the court was effectively intimidated in changing their position on some issues that he cared about. Uh, this is disputed by 
uh, experts and some believe that the court shift was not at all related to uh, the court packing plan. Uh, but to the extent there's a perception that FDR put, FDR's plan did work in a sense, uh, that might increase the desirability of trying this from the point of view of current Democrats. A couple of the last recent appointees are very young. I look at some of the recent nomination fights and it seems like a lot of importance is being placed on one judge. And I think a lot of people would say, well, if, if one judge can tip the political scales in this country, should there be some sort of judicial reform? Is there something that you could get behind? Uh, certainly, as people continue to live longer and longer, uh, we could get to situations where the average life expectancy is as high as 110 or 120 or even higher. And so you get uh, justices who, if they serve for life, will be on the court for 50, 60, 70 years. At some point, that would be intolerable and would strengthen the case for some sort of term limits for the court. Many people have proposed 18-year terms, but we could argue about exactly how long is ideal. Similarly, uh, there, it might be reasonable to say we want to diminish the significance of any one vote in the Supreme Court, and that could also justify increasing its size, so long as the increase uh, was done in such a way that it wouldn't just allow one president to completely pack the court by appointing five or six or seven new justices. You could potentially stagger the new seats. You could also combine it with some sort of term limits uh, and preferably any such reform uh, which would require a constitutional amendment. Uh, that amendment uh, hopefully would also include a permanent cap on the number of justices on the Supreme Court so as to forestall future court packing. So I think term limits, an increase in the size of the court uh, that's done in a way that avoids court packing, uh, I think both of those might be useful reforms. Uh, but note that neither of those by itself uh, would give Democrats the thing that many of them most want right now, which is to reverse the current narrow 5-4 conservative majority on the court. Also, these other types of reforms probably would require a constitutional amendment, uh, which makes them more difficult to enact than a simple conventional court packing. Why should people be paying attention to this issue in this election cycle and the ones that follow? The Supreme Court and also the lower federal courts decide a wide range of issues that are extremely important to many people. Everything from abortion to the balance of power between the federal and state governments to civil liberties, uh, uh, all s property rights, all sorts of important things. Uh, so therefore, even if people don't know much about the courts, uh, which polls show that they don't, uh, the courts do have an important effect on their lives. Moreover, if court packing does happen and you get this cycle of retaliation, this quite valuable institution would be undermined and protections for our civil liberties, uh, for separation of power, for limits on the power of federal government, for property rights and so on, all of that would be significantly weakened over time. And I think even if liberals perhaps in particular would be happy to see the current conservative Supreme Court majority reversed, and I can understand to some extent how they feel about that. In the long run, both they and the rest of us would be likely to be significantly worse off uh, if court packing becomes a regular part uh, of American politics. And once one party succeeds in doing it, there is a very high probability that the other party will retaliate in kind. Mm -hmm.